Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. I don't know why every time I sit that, before I come around in front of the camera, it always looks good, but then I always have to come back and, and readjust it up. Anyway, so, um, I think we're video 19 on our making a new knife pattern. Um, that's not in the title, start to finish, but that's what we're doing, start to finish, right? Which is why we're at... 19 videos so far and I'm going into incredible detail which is you know why it's so long-winded but I know that there is at least one new knife maker who is just eating this up because like I said you know I mean I was a new knife maker at one time and a lot of this is a lot of the stuff that I remember missing from books other YouTube videos things like that right okay so um, we glued up the handle scales uh, the last uh, episode, I guess, right? <clears throat> so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and grind these, all right? We need to take, you know, this or these, you know, blocks, which aren't very comfy, and turn them into something that is comfortable, right? Okay, so this video right here, we're probably just going to get through grinding, um, and that's just grind rough shaping. We'll do another one on hand sanding, but first... What happens when you screw a handle up? All right. So this one right here, um, this is one of the um, that newer um, Sab style uh, pairing knives. It's got a little bit shorter handle, a little bit more blade. Um, I'm actually liking it a little bit. I think the handle's a little bit on the small side for me, <clears throat> which, like I said before, I've got. Uh, I wear an extra large glove um, most of the time. Um, you know, they're usually kind of tight to start off with, but that's okay. <clears throat> so usually, if I make a knife handle to where it feels either good or a little bit small in my hand, most other people will like it quite a bit from what I found. But what happens when you screw one up? So if you look at this one, you might think, okay, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, right? But if you look, <clears throat> and I'm not sure if we're going to be able to pick this up, but there is more of a gap on this left side than there is on the right side all right and I don't like it and since I don't like it um, we're gonna take that handle off so that I can put a new one on um, one nice thing about working in batches like I do first of all it's way more efficient right you get in the groove for each step okay so if you were to make one knife at a time you'd have to change all your tooling for each operation okay um, and that takes time but one of the great things about working in batches that you don't hear discussed an awful lot is that is getting in that groove okay so let's say you're making you know a batch of six pairing knives right well you step up to that grinder to grind the bevels in all right and that first one's always a little bit wonky you know I mean unless you ground you know six of the same knife the day before you know I mean um, even even if you grind every day unless you're grinding the same knife every day like just that pair and just that style of pair then every time you switch to a new pattern or a new class of knife there's all that first one's always just a little bit wonky because you're kind of getting used to it right um, big time thing there is with uh, uh, using a micrometer when you're grinding which um, I suppose we're getting off on the handle material section but just just real quick uh, using a micrometer when you're grinding because let's say you're working on you know 18 inch choppers one day right and then the next day you go to paring knives all right if you don't have a micrometer when you're grinding your paring knives will be thick chunky beast of a paring knife because you're used to grinding you know the day before you ground choppers and if you grind the chopper to the right right geometry and it looks good the next day your eye will think okay that looks good well that what looks good for a chopper is not near thin enough for a paring knife all right so when you're grinding you know multiple knives like that you get in the swing. That first one you grind and you get, you know, you have a little bit of wonkiness and then it, it smooths out and then the next five knives after that go nice and smooth. Um, and so that really helps out a lot. But occasionally you do screw up and this handle is one of them. So to get this handle off of here, 
like I said, this has got the five minute, um, uh, I can't remember the, the, the name of the outfit that made this particular epoxy, but it's in the same class as like a Loctite, <coughs> a Loctite five minute, I think they're uh, like 3,600 PSI or 5,000 PSI strength. Okay, so this is the fastest way to get one of these handles off, right? That. That big chunk of gorgeous steel right there, right? Or iron, you know, whichever one it's made out of. Okay, so we've got our handle. we got our anvil. Use your nasty hammer for this, okay? This is my, this is my nasty four pound hammer. You can see the faces aren't near. Okay, so this is a forging hammer. All right, see how, well, that one needs, needs dressed. But these faces are way, way rougher than the faces on a forging hammer, right? So your forging hammer, any mark that's on the face of that hammer will get transferred to your, your workpiece, right? So always keep, you know, a nasty hammer for jobs like this. <clears throat> so this epoxy, like I said, it's got a 3,000 or a 5,000 PSI strength on it, right? But it's also very, very, it's very hard, it's very strong, but it's also kind of on the brittle side. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that. You can try to grind these off, but the problem is, is when you go up to the belt grinder, once you start getting to where there's not very much of the handle material left, when you start grinding, you're inadvertently always going to grind into the tang, okay? And then that reduces the chance that the tang is going to be flat, okay? So the best way I've found is to use a hammer on the anvil. A couple of things to look out for. First of all is um, you want to hold the blade securely. Have it taped up if possible because, like I said, these paring knives, they're not sharpened, but they're very, very thin. You know, that edge is probably, oh, five thousandths of an inch thick or less at the, at the very edge, okay? So you put pressure on that and it's going to cut your flesh all right another thing is is that these are out of 16th inch stock okay and the tangs are not really hardened i mean they'll get some flash hardening but they're not very hard all right so they're fairly soft so you start wailing away on this hammer in one spot for too long you can bend that tang and make it all wonky now sure you can come back out and straighten it but that's another step okay so the easiest way to do this, like I said, is put that handle on the anvil. You can see that. Yep, you can see that. Okay, and whack it with a hammer. Boom, right there. Two whacks. Now, what we get to look at here, which is why well, I was pretty happy that, um, well, I mean, I guess happy as I can be that I screwed something up, right? Um, is it while I'm thinking about this, you know, and doing this video, now we get to test out a handle. Okay, let's go back over the bench where we've got some good light and we'll examine what is going on inside that handle. Right? I mean, we know why I screwed the handle up. I mean, <coughs> it was one of those, I really only had time to do, you know, to glue up five handles with that batch of epoxy. Um, and I tried squeezing the sixth one in, you know, it happens, right? Okay, so now we get to see And this is something that you ought to do as often as you can. I mean, like I said, I mean if you're gonna screw stuff something up um, You know, and it's gonna cost you money or time or whatever you might as well get something out of it, right? So you can see how those epoxy rivets, see how that's proud right there? I tilt it to the side there, okay. And how that went completely through the tang. And then grabbed a hold of the other side, okay. You can see that um, uh, the amount of epoxy even though this side right here wasn't showing very much gap at all, it still got a good coating of epoxy in it. This side right here that had too much gap, you can see it's got more epoxy in there. And you can also see where that epoxy was starting to set up before um, the pressure got applied, all right? Which is why, um, 
you know, this is a fail. Okay. Um, you know, actually, those scales don't look too bad. You know what I might try to do? No, I'll make new scales. Because this, when, when I hit with the hammer there, you can see how it mushroomed out the wood and split it. And you can, well, at least I can see the scale is now bowed. So this is our hit point, right? Okay, so it's bowed like this. Okay, so even if I straightened it out, this handle scale would be weak. I mean, even though it's a paring knife and paring knives, um, you know, really shouldn't take a whole, I mean, it's not like you're gonna go chop a tree down with a paring knife, right? Um, or at least you shouldn't. Um, but still, you know, I mean, the materials ought to be, you know, as stress-free as possible. Now, had we already uh, put pins and pinned those pins over on this, it would have taken a lot more to separate that not, those scales from that blade or the tang. Okay, the reason being is that, you know, with this, all we had was those epoxy rivets, okay? And they have great strength going this away and going this away, but when you start putting impact on this uh, five-minute epoxy, um, it don't take it too well, all right? Which is why um, when I was telling you about the two different types of epoxy I use, one of them is the five-minute stuff that works really great for, for paring knives, for EDCs, you know, for things that aren't going to get an awful lot of impact, uh, that aren't going to take a whole lot of impacts, okay? Like a chopper will take impacts, okay? So you take a, a, or a sword or something, right? I mean, uh, you know, I don't think I have any choppers right here right now. But anyway, if you have a chopper, you know, and you're sitting there, you're, you know, chopping with it. Well, every time that blade hits that wood, you know, I mean, the blade's going to sink into it a little bit, which kind of eases the, the vibration and the stress, but still, you're going to get a shock, right? And that shock is going to get transmitted to a handle, all right? Which is why that G-Flex works so amazingly well, because it is very strong, but yet it's got just a little bit of give, and it'll take that kind of abuse. Or actually just use, I mean, if you're, you know, if that's what you design it for. Whereas this type of epoxy won't. <coughs> All right, so let's go ahead, since I showed you how to take those handles off, which was a bonus, let's go ahead and grind this one, right? Actually, I'll take the other one with me, and then I'll grind it, uh, you know, right afterwards. All right, so we are going to bring you in and set you up. Okay, now on this one, we are going to get set up. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. And then I am going to wear a mask, okay, because even with the um, um, air filtration set up here, <coughs> we've got two choices. I should have made one of these out of hickory. Hickory I would grind without a mask, you know, to, to be able to chat with you. But we got cocobolo, which is very oily and, uh, you know, can be toxic. And we have got stabilized cottonwood burl, which, um, you know, the, the cactus juice is kind of like epoxy, right? So it's not something that you really want to turn into dust and breathe very much. Okay, so let me grab my mask. Okay, I got a mask safety glasses, and my little welding hat. All right, so let me get this up here a little bit. Okay, our first step, you can see, okay. So our first step is going to be to grind the scales this way, okay? What that's going to do is see there's always going to be a little bit of epoxy run out, okay? So there's going to be run out, there's going to be goobers, there's going to be all the kind of that stuff. So when you set that on their platen, it's not going to sit flush, okay? And our first step after, or our, our second step, I guess, so we are going to grind it flush like this so that it'll sit on the platen nice and flat and stable, right? Then we are going to come back and we're going to get our profile done, okay? Now the easiest way to tell when, you're, when your profile is done is when your belt starts throwing sparks. 
because wood doesn't throw sparks. Okay, so the second you start throwing sparks, especially on a 36 grit belt, also this is the uh, uh, eight is eight AZX 36 grit belt. I get this from Pops. Um, they're a zirconia type belt, if I believe. X weight. Um, <clears throat> I want to say they run like three bucks a piece. They are okay on steel and everything, but I like those blaze belts so more, but so much more for steel. But I don't want to, you know, take a, a, a ten or a twelve dollar belt, you know, just to grind some handle material when a three dollar belt will do it just as good. These belts in this application, they're going to gum up way faster than you're going to dull them. Okay, so you end up throwing these away because they're just gummed up and you can't get them clean anymore. All right, so we're going to go this way to flatten it, so that way it sits flat on the platen. Then we are going to go around the, the profile, okay? We're going to get up in here kind of as close as we can, but we're not, not going to get too crazy about it, right? Because we got small wheel attachment on the little bitty grinder, you know, out in the main shop. Once we get that done, um, actually I'll go ahead and do both of these and then, uh, uh, and then I'll show you the next step there. Okay. Oh, I need uh, earplugs. Wait a minute. I got some in my back pocket. Can't remember what I was doing that I shoved earplugs in my back pocket, but they've been in there for oh about two weeks, and they've been really handy having them in my pocket like that.
Okay. So this belt right here, let's shut the fan off. Okay, so this belt right here is starting to get <coughs> is starting to get pretty gummed up, okay? Um, in fact, we're just going to have enough life out of this belt to go ahead and do the next step of shaping this handle. Well, we'll get this one and this one rough ground, and then this belt will be done, all right? Okay, so, um, now see also, see how fast those fans clear this room out? I mean, it's it's simply amazing. And then, let's say we, we look outside in the shop. See, it's clear enough you can see Vance over there working on his bug. Um, he's replacing that wiring harness. I don't know if you guys remember, but um, yeah, it's time for a new wiring harness. I mean, that's a 69 or 1969 bug, so that that wiring harness is, is pretty old and time for a new one. But look at the, the air inside the shop. I mean, all that grinding, all that dust, and there ain't nothing. Um, there's a the smell of whatever it is that you're grinding <coughs> out in the shop, but as far as the actual dust goes, there's nothing out there, right? Okay. So let's see. Let's get you back. Actually, this time, I'm going to point you a little bit farther down because we're going to, well, yeah, we're going to go on the platen. All right. So now we have our profile done, and we can also check and make sure that our gap looks nice and even. Um, you know, our epoxy gap does, okay? Um, so this looks good, all right? And you can kind of start to see what that handle's gonna look like, and it's gonna be a really nice looking handle. Um, <clears throat> so our next step, uh, now that we got our profile done, is to get our basic, um, uh, our basic profile this way done, okay? Now, on these type of knives, or um, really on most of my knives, um, I like very, simple shapes, okay? Very little contouring, um, because it seems to me like the simpler the shape, the easier it is for your hand to, uh, to wield it in different positions, okay? So think about like, uh, you know, an ax handle or uh, a hammer handle, or, uh, you know, even a handle on like a screwdriver or something, okay? Those are very, very simple shapes, and yet they're comfortable to just about anybody that picks them up, okay? Because the last thing you want to do is get a handle that is so uh, complicated and so um, uh, tuned into one person's hand that the next person picks it up and doesn't like it, all right? And our hands adapt so well um, to simple shapes that you pick this handle up and within 10 minutes worth of work that handle your hand will adapt to that handle and it will feel comfortable okay as long as it's a relatively simple shape that is also sized fairly well right like i said uh before you know i wear an extra large glove okay and what i found is that if if i make a handle that feels good to a little bit on the small side then most people will pick that knife up and be able to use it. Um, you know, I've got a lot bigger hands than my boy does, and I can make a handle, and as long as it feels like that, then he picks that knife up, and within a couple of minutes, you know, he can do good work with it, and it feels good to him, all right? So if uh, if you're a maker and you have, you know, large, I mean, if, if you have an extra large size hand, I would suggest, you know, going like that. If you've got huge freaking, you know, palm a basketball type mitts, you know, you might want to uh, say, okay, well, I need to make something that feels quite a bit smaller than what is comfortable for me. Um, or if you've got really, really small hands, you know, you might want to make sure that, that everything feels too big. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, that's, that's just kind of a, uh, a good rule of thumb, kind of. Okay, so... Now, we got this done, so now we need to do this. For the most part, if it's not straight, okay, I like thinner here, thinner here, and a little bit of swell in the middle, okay? It won't be much, but a little bit, okay? So now what we need to do, and the, the best way i found to do that, is to take your table, make sure it's set pretty much square. This is actually tapered 
up just a little bit, <coughs> which is fine. Now I'm going to want to tilt this, tilt the blade, the cutting edge towards the belt, okay? So that way the front of this knife is going to be narrower than the back of the knife, okay? Because the back of the knife needs to be narrower because if you've got to do any like power cuts like this, if you want, if you're going to have it fatter, you want it to be fatter on the back than on the front, okay? So I'm going to tilt the blade in and we're going to, you know, come up in here, come up in here, and then smooth out the, you know, the, the middle section to kind of match. And we'll come over here same way, tilt the edge up into the belt, thin it here, thin it here, bring this in to match, okay? We're going to do that on both knives and then we'll, uh, then we'll stop again. Let's see, where's my earplug? Got to turn the fan on. Well, you can really tell the tell the difference between fan and no fan. Look at all that dust that's just sitting in the, the air. <coughs> we'll, have, we'll turn it back on here in a second. Okay, let's get you back. Okay, so our next step, we're going to get rid of the platen. Okay, and now we've got our basic tapers and our basic preform and everything, right? Okay, so we're thinner up here, thinner down here, a little bit thicker in the middle, thinner here, thinner here, a little bit thicker in the middle. This part is thinner than this part, okay? It's starting to feel like a good handle, okay? But it's got these, you know, corners and everything. So now what we need to do is come up in 
and take these corners off. Now we're still at a 36 grit belt. It's all full worn, so it's not going to cut as fast as a fresh one will. And we're just going to start uh, smoothing these, these lines out, okay? Up in here, we're pretty much going to leave that alone, okay? Because trying to, to, to cut a curve smoothly on a X-weight 36 grit belt with, you know, just two big wheels is, uh, is not going to work out all that well. But it's grind, feel, grind, feel, okay? We'll do that on both of these knives, and then uh, we'll be ready for hand sanding. Well, we'll be ready to go to 220 grit belt, and then we'll be ready for hand sanding. Let me kick this fan on. Oh, I forgot. <coughs> that is, uh, it's a belt cleaner. All it is is an eraser, like a piece of rubber. So, uh, you get these at, uh, I think you can get them at Sears. Jant sells them. Um, in a bind, you can use like a horse stall mat rubber, or, <coughs> that dust is getting to me. You can use just a wire brush, and that'll clean it out pretty good too.
Okay. So we are done with this belt, and this belt is done. As in trash can time. We'll give the, the fans just another minute or so to clear the air out. Okay, so this, while we're waiting, uh, this is a Hermes RB406 J-Flex 220 grit belt. Okay, get these from Pops also. <coughs> get these from Pops also. They're just a couple of bucks a piece. And for the, for the most part, all I use them for is handle materials. Okay, so what we've got now is a fairly comfortable, um, you know, handle. All right. I mean, all the major parts are in place. What little bit of taper it has feels good, okay? It feels good in my hand. It's a little bit on the big side right now, okay? Now, <clears throat> we're going to go from a 36 grit straight to a 220 grit finish, okay? Um, I have been playing around with some 80 grits, uh, 80 grit J flexes. I believe they're Hermes also, and they do really good, um, but... Uh, we're not going to do that this time, okay? We're just going to go straight to the 220 grip belt. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to come back in. We're going to get all these 30 get 36 grit scratches off of the, you know, the um, the profile, okay? All that we can get into. While we're there, we'll also clean up the back of the spine, you know, get rid of all this fire scale that's on there, and then get it blended in to match because right now it's going to be, you know, the the spine is going to be a little bit higher than the than the back of the handle because we were just grinding the handle part we never did touch the spine <clears throat> so we're going to clean that up clean all this up clean as much of this up as we can okay because remember we still got that small wheel attachment out in the, the shop that we can get to if you don't have a small wheel attachment then i'll show you um, how to clean that up when we get to hand sanding okay but right now what we need to do is get rid of all these 36 grit scratches get rid of these um you know these sharp corners and everything um, or these sharp cut lines and then you know that's going to make it feel considerably smaller all right now uh, another thing is a lot of guys get hung up on absolute symmetry okay so they want you know to look at the back of this handle and see that everything is precisely if you were to <coughs> lay a mirror right down the spine of that tang that one side would look exactly like the other side Okay, I don't really get too hung up on that as long as they're fairly close. Okay, what I'm really after is I want something that's that feels good when I pick it up. Okay, that feels good when I pick it up. That it is a little bit wider in the back than it is in the front, um, and that it's a good simple handle. Okay, if it feels good in my hand, it's gonna feel good in your hand more than likely. All right, so. Um, and our hands aren't symmetrical either, you know, so, yeah. So unless you're like, um, you know, in a situation where you have to have absolute symmetry, or if that's something that you really like, then uh, honestly, I don't really bother with it all that much. Okay, so now the level of dust that we get is going to be quite a bit less because um, we're not really hogging material off. We're smoothing and starting to work on our finish. Okay, so we got to, but we still got to mask up again. I probably ought to show you what I look like all masked up. I hear it looks pretty funny. <coughs> the dogs, they get a kind of a kick out of it. Every time I step out of the grinder, they look at me like, are we sure you're you? You know, because I don't smell like, you know, I mean, I probably smell like me, but I smell like me and Coca Bolo and, and, uh, steel or whatever it is I'm grinding. Plus, I sure don't look like me with all this on.
Okay, so actually let's go ahead and just head on out of here. We'll let the fan keep running for a little bit to really clear that air out. Okay, so now we can take a look at what it is that we've got. Okay, so we have got two handles now that are starting to look pretty good, okay? We are probably, oh, 70% to the way of what that handle is going to feel like when it's finished, okay? You notice we still don't have pins. Okay, the pins will get added when we are pretty much done hand sanding this handle, <coughs> all right? Um, they'll be the last step, or, or the second to the last step. We'll, We'll get everything pretty much as close as we're going to get it. Maybe leave it a little bit fat up in this where the pins are going to be. Then we're going to install the pins. Well, we're going to prep the holes for the pins, then install the pins. Then we'll come back and we'll hand sand the heads of the pins um, and clean everything up. You'll notice that right off of the, the main grinder, these this part right here is entirely unfinished pretty much, right? Um, and it also still feels a little bit small to my hand, the, the, the toil area, okay, this all feels like it needs to, like this, uh, uh, this curve needs to be deeper and longer, okay, which is okay, because we'll go ahead and clean that up on the small wheel grinder, right? So that is pretty much the end of the uh, machine work on the big grinder, all right? The rest of this uh, handle is going to be done by hand. Um, with sandpaper um, and the small wheel attachment to, to clean this up in here round these corners off and everything then when we're pretty much done then we'll come back and you know round off the spine because now we know where the end of our handle scales are going to be right so we can go ahead and round that off um, sharpen the thing up um, make a sheath for it and pretty much away we go so we're <coughs> we're getting close Things are starting to look like a knife. You can tell that that um, WD-40, I told you it leaves like a film on the blade. You can tell it's really protecting it. Um, let's see, another thing probably to mention is that when you go to grind the handle, like I said, this isn't sharpened yet, okay? But just because it isn't sharpened doesn't mean that it's not sharp. I mean, okay, it's just going to tear newsprint, right? But it'll still go into newsprint and it'll still cut its way out, okay? If it'll do that, it will cut your flesh, all right? So, and when you're working on the handle, typically speaking, you're holding the blade, all right? So make sure that when you hold that blade, you've got a pretty good grip on it, right? And you're easing into the belt, okay? If you're not comfortable with that, leave that puppy taped up. Okay, or you could wear gloves if you wanted to, whatever, all right? But just make sure that um, uh, that you are definitely on your game when you're holding that blade, okay? Even if it's taped up, right? And you're wearing gloves, still be on your game because um, that can, you know, kind of ruin your day. But we can kind of start to see what our handle's going to look like. And it's going to be a real pretty piece of cocobolo. And our burl one. You know, that's not a bad looking piece of burl. You know, the burl will have to um, do more work to bring it out to make it look its best. But we'll get there. Okay, so we went over taking a handle off. There we go again. Taking a handle off that we screwed up and then um, grinding our two um, handles here. Um, one of the, the comments on, I think, the uh, second or the third pattern, um, or the second or the third video is out now, um, and one of the comments said, uh, blue collar would be a good name for these. Um, you know, I kind of like that. Um, I'm not quite sure if we're going to use it, but I think blue collar EDC or um, maybe just town, you know, town. We'll figure something out for a name. If nothing else, it'll be, you know, a 4-inch EDC because that's kind of typically how my name's run. 
All right. Well, again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video on grinding the knife handles and getting them prepped to start hand sanding. And um, we'll do the hand sanding video maybe tomorrow. And so until tomorrow, we will see you next time.